Welcome back to Bits of an Artist's Life. This is Sadie Hester and I'm excited about this week's video because I feel like it's going to be packed with inspiration and teaching. For the last couple weeks I have been painting from family photos. Actually I've been doing that for years but I've picked it back up recently for a couple very specific reasons. I want to tell you how I'm using those photos. It's quite different than in the past the way I've approached using family photos. In the past I've used them in a way that like I'm wanting to use them as reference, but I'm trying to capture a likeness and, and still try to paint loose, but using them in that way. I think that's the way most people would use photos. I've been approaching it different this time, and I want to tell you why and how I'm using them. And then I've got a stack of sketchbooks here where I've gone through and marked all of them, and I want to show you them and tell you more about how I've been using this process of going back to family photos. So I've been getting into figure drawing and, and sketching and painting more lately, but sometimes I find that some of the online things are, I don't know, they feel dark, like things that give you references or models. It, it's just not always my cup of tea. So I thought, let me pull out my family photos. The negative with family photos is this, they're people you love usually and they have memories attached to them and you bring all that with you when you go to sketch or draw or paint them. Which for me equals, and for most people, being tighter. And I'm always after a looseness. I want a gesturalness. I don't want to tell about every eyelash. I want I'm going more for abstraction, which is really hard and harder than what most people think. And so I started pulling those out and then I thought, oh, I was painting from them. And I was like, yeah, doing my normal thing of being really tight. And I put them away. And then I got to thinking about what my end goal, like at some point I do want to paint things that I feel very emotional about. I want to be at a place sometime where I'm able to tell a story and have more symbolism and emotion in what I'm painting. So I thought, you know what, family photos then are the perfect thing to do. So I thought I'm gonna pull them out, things that feel inspiring. One of the things that's really nice about the photos is that there's usually some narrative involved in them. So that's what I've been doing. I've been pulling out photos. I decided to not just go through a huge bin of them all at once. I thought I'm gonna just go through them. When I pull three or four out that I feel excited about, I'm going to put the box aside and start sketching. I feel like that was important and helped me a lot because I didn't spend a huge amount of time looking. I just grabbed something that felt like, ooh, that feels exciting, pulled it out. I'm not trying to overthink things. I'm just doing exactly what I do when I'm out someplace. It's kind of like, oh, that caught my eye. Okay, sit down and capture it. I'm not approaching these like this big finished go over the mantle piece. I'm just wanting to stretch my skills and practice different things. Can I abstract this? Can I approach something that has meaning and emotion to me but not be tight in the way I approach it? Can I paint it in the way that I would like to paint it? So that's what I've been doing and what I find is the first time that I go to it I am quite tight and I did fight against that at first and then I realized, you know, that's kind of how it is with subjects that we're new to or that feel any emotion. We can approach them a little more tight and that's fine. I do find that I often do that. And then I, it's like I gotta work everything out, figure it out, look at it, and then I can start seeing what I like about it and what I don't and what feels like it can be left out. And then I try to push it more and more. So what I've been doing is I'll take a photo. Sometimes I've been sketching it and be like, meh, that didn't interest me. Other times I'm like, oh, it did. And so then I'll do it again and do it again and do it again. And sometimes I'll do it and then do it with a different medium and then uh, time myself with a, you know, make myself go fast with it, those kinds of things. That's how I've been using this photos. And I have been having so much fun in creating work that I've really been excited about. I want to say this though. I usually don't give like strong warnings, but I feel very passionate about this. I am not going to share as many of the actual photos. I'm only going to share two. The reason is I'm at a place where I'm feeling really weary of people copying not only my work, but my reference material. Um, and unfortunately, that's going to kind of ruin it for the whole. Because for most of y'all, you don't do that. But I get so much copying and it just feels gunky. And these are 
my pictures and my family. And so please do not paint for my photos, paint for my paintings, like use your own references. You have your own family photos. This is a teaching tool to show you how you could use this tool that everybody has in their own home. And it's not about how to paint in the way that I'm painting or f to give you references. So <laughs> the ones that I show you or the sketches that I show you, please do. I, I feel like I, should, I don't even want to use the word please because that feels nice. I feel like I want to give a really firm warning. Do not copy these. And I feel kind of bummed. Like I'm excited about this video, but also feel torn because I want to show you. I feel like there's more teaching in the fact that I, if I could show you the photo and show you the sketch, but I'm only going to do that with two because there's a lot of family members and I'm also not going to go to all the family members and ask their permission. I asked my sister. She's in two of them that I'm going to show you and she was like, yes. And then she also said, look how adorable I, adorable I am. That was her response. I'm like, you are adorable. Yes. The other thing I want to say before we jump into actually looking at the references, I am trying very hard to not no, let me say it this way. If the end result doesn't resemble the person, I feel like I've won. It's, I, it's all about me trying to just use this as a somewhat reference, a somewhat inspiration, not to make things look like they do. So you'll see, I actually kind of, as I get in my terms better, it looks less and less like the person. Early on, sometimes I'm capturing kind of the essence of them like I think you know you can see them in or me in some of these and then the looser I get the more of I'm just able to use this as a reference and it's just as a person so I don't know if that makes sense at all but I just want you to know my thought process as I go into this and what my expectations the way I'm thinking about these photos because I do think family memories and photos are very hard to paint from I've got a wall in my foyer where I've got family photos I've been painting from, or I have paintings from family photos back when I painted in oils. And back then I was trying to get a likeness. Unfortunately, some of them do not have any likeness, but for me, they still have memories because I was painting from those photos. But that is not what I'm doing here. It's basically like, here I've just taken a person, a picture of a person on a street, on the street, and I want to use them as reference or out of a magazine. But these have more feelings attached to them, and I'm trying to see, can I paint past those and with emotion in it and not feel tied and tight? I don't know if that makes sense. I hope it does. Either way, let's jump into looking at these sketches. Okay, let's get started. I have tried to number everything in an order that I want to be able to tell you um, because I work in multiple sketchbooks at the same time and things are kind of all over the place. I'm going to do my best to do it in some sort of order, not necessarily the date that I did it in, but I've got a little bit of an order. And I will also tell you that they get better than these first few which is no surprise because I'm practicing more. So the very first one I did was a from a picture of me, I think I was in like VBS or something. I can tell that this is something from church, but I, the main reason I wanted to do this was because the sun that was behind it. Some of these I'll be able to tell you what I used and others I won't. I think I used just my paint markers and my watercolor markers and color pencil in here, but very, I don't know. I did this very quickly. I don't care for that one at all. This is one that I was trying to do even looser. This is me and my aunt, and I think it said that I was four. I did get a likeness of both of us, but I was really interested, as usual, in the things around it. Like, there was paneling. I'm also trying to fill to see what I used. I think I used soft pastel, oil pastel, color pencil. Maybe that's it. But I liked kind of the messiness and the looseness of this. I felt like I did a lot better with looseness in this one. Then I did this one of me and my sister. I've got two photos of us in bed on the same night reading. This is a closer up, and you're going to see one that's a little more zoomed out where these two uh, pictures are, Raggedy Ann and Andy, and they're hysterical. I can't wait to get to those. But this one again... 
I was a little too tight. Um, both of us, there's too much similarity if you ask me. And I used watercolor, maybe just only watercolor in this, yeah. When I say watercolor, I also mean some gouache. This is my watercolor palette, and I do have some gouache in here also. So more opaque, basically gouache is just opaque watercolor. The difference is you have um, gouache and then you have acrylic gouache. Regular gouache you can reconstitute, re-wet, just like watercolor. Acrylic, um, acrylic gouache, though, you cannot reconstitute, so I would never put something like that in here because it would just completely dry up, but all of this can be reconstituted, which is really nice. So I used watercolor here. I don't love this. The other ones of this scene where we're zoomed out, I really had fun with. Then this is of me and a friend. I was mostly interested in this like bear or monkey that was in this stroller. I don't even know who this girl is. My mom's not even real sure. I also liked the landscape of this, but I started off tight, which is fine. I'm realizing now, like, that's fine. Go on and do your tight version and figure things out. And at this point, I was realizing that's what I needed to do. Work it out and then play. So then I picked a different medium. I picked my, I think it's Neo Colors. Could be, well, pastels, but I'm pretty sure because they're not real thick. Neo colors. So that was just a tool that was going to loosen me up. I also did more of just a quick timed study on this. Then I thought, let's do it again. Let's see, is this going to be the same day? Friday the 30th? Yes, same day. Did I do this one the same day? Yes. So I did one, did it again, did it again. And I really like this one a lot better because it's loose. I used my watercolor. I can tell I picked up a big brush and I just did it fast. I thought, just use this as reference, Sandy. Try to abstract it. I was also playing with the landscape a little bit. So we were standing on a road. I wasn't real sure how to render that. I liked this, the background. And in the picture, it's a little bit bluish like this. So um, I, I do think I wanna go back to this though, cause looking at this now, like I'm, the striped shirt of this girl, you can tell I get less and less detailed. I have a little tank on. I mean, look, here I'm even rendering some shadow, which is kind of cracking me up. I could tell here I was getting really into the background, a little too into it, and here I tried to abstract it a little more. Okay. Then, let's see what I picked. Oh yeah, I can't believe I only did this one once. This is of my grandmother and my aunt on Easter. And I do love this so much. So I first did a quick sketch, I think with, it was either a blue pencil or a Neo color. But most of this is done, um, I did a, a loose wash, either with watercolor, but I may have used soft pastels for this whole thing because you can put soft pastels down and wet them. But I bet I started with some watercolor, but there's soft pastel all through this, and I love it. I need to come back to this. I felt like I did a good job of being loose and abstracting this, and even letting some of these early marks stay through and go straight through their face. Um, I love that kind of thing. I love how I abstracted the background, and this was a black and white photo, so I made up all of the colors, which um, was kind of fun to do. Let's see, okay, this is where some of the fun begins. This is that version, actually I was gonna show, this is one of the ones I'm gonna show the picture of. So, I know there's probably gonna be reflections, maybe I can take a picture of the picture. Oh, I've got a big loud plane going overhead too. But this is a zoomed out version of us reading in bed. But I loved the wallpaper, and I loved these two raggedy and an Andy photos. That's what I was more interested in than anything. But then there are some things up here I started getting interested in, interested in too. There's a quilt here that's pink and blue. Um, my mom told me who knitted that or crocheted that, but I can't remember. You can see just a little bit of the end table and I remember the lamp that was there. And you can see as I paint this more and more, I started adding like cookies and milk to the side table and just playing more with the narrative. But what I decided first to do was just work it out. I used, 
one of my favorite color pencils was is Derwent Color Soft in Pimento. It's just a nice, warm color. So I sketched it out. Again, this is where I had most fun, and then some of the patterns. Thought, let's work it out. Be tight, tight for me these days. And then what did I go to next? Let's see here. Bigger sketchbook. In fact, let me zoom y'all out. Ooh. Zoom out. Okay. Okay, here is what is funny about this. This is my first version that's a little tight. I want you to keep an eye on Raggedy Ann and Andy because as I get looser, they get scarier. Like literally at some point, they have looks on their faces that are so sinister. And one of these makes me laugh so hard every time I look at it. But uh, the things that were always fun in this, I play every single time with the wallpaper. Maybe I should just show them all to you and then I can point out the differences. I got a little lost here in trying to just be abstract with the bedding. I got to this and thought, oh, that's fun, that crocheted quilt. But this, I played it a little safe at first and then I end up pushing it each time. The lamp was a ton of fun. Okay, version two. We all get a little scarier looking, but I'm trying to be loose. I realize here, like, I didn't enjoy what I had on and what I painted, so I even changed that up a little bit. I'm trying to just keep, you know, block things in. You can see more of the quilt coming in. Again, with the lamp, and the background gets a little more elaborate. And then I play around with Raggedy Ann and Andy. They are starting to look creepy. Er. But I mean, little things like the red stripes on the socks are just so much fun. So much fun. Okay, then is it this next one? Yes, this next one cracks me up. Is this the last one? of the, I think this is the last one of this series. Yes, but I want to come back to it. Okay, now this pattern that I'm loving has taken over the bed. So let's see how it started. So we have it just a little peeping in here, a little more, and then now it's like, let's just fill this whole thing. And playing again with the background, I started, I sketched this whole thing out with a really bright blue pencil. Let me grab it. I used the Luminance, let me put my glasses on so I can read this. Luminance Middle Cobalt Blue 660. I quickly did a loose sketch. You can see it all around here, and I liked that blue showing through. In fact, I think I went back and even um, added some more of it where I'd accidentally painted, or not accidentally, but I painted over it. Raggedy Ann and Andy are in full on creepy, scary horror movie kind of thing going on here. I love how my sister turned out here. I've completely changed her clothing, okay? And I put myself in the red. So back here, this is more like what we actually had on from the picture. And then here now I've put her in a blue. I just thought, okay, play. I don't have to be tied to the photograph. Like make this its own scene. Every single time I had fun with this book also, all the abstractness of it, because as I would get used to, my eyes would get used to the photo, I would start seeing more things but I do love how my sister's face turned out there. It was really sweet and it doesn't look like her. I'm still looking a little like me, uh, which kind of doesn't surprise me, but okay. So that was number 11, where's number 12? Okay, we're gonna leave this sketchbook for just a moment. We'll come back to it. All right, end of the day one day, I pulled out another photo of me on a horse. Very weird that I put my face right in that gutter. I'm pretty sure I started with the horse and then that's where I ended up, but I didn't care. I really was interested in the darkness back here and this house. I didn't really care about me. I wanted to be really, really loose. That was on the seventh. Okay, then the next day, this is one of my favorites. This is a picture of my aunt, my cousin, me, and my grandmother. And then there was another picture, this same family gathering of me. And so I felt like something needed to be here, so I put me in again. 
So another way that you can like play. I loved the shirt that I had on. I loved just all the pattern, the pattern of the couch. And I think my, I made my aunt look really pretty here. That's probably my favorite painting of everything. I loved the plants that were in the back and I kind of played around with where those were. I loved my grandmother's like big glasses and you know, just even rendering things like um, her hand here just in color pencil instead of feeling like I needed to paint that in. So I do feel like I got some looseness. I used um, gouache, acrylic gouache, color pencils, paint markers. Ooh, I can feel some oil pastel there in the background using all the things. And I love this. I feel like there's some narrative to it pattern and color. Then I did one of um, family. We were in Hawaii and I really like the background here. I really, I don't know, my face here looks really weird. A lot of these photos, people are smiling, but smiling people are really difficult. They usually look very scary and so I just don't render the smiles. Um, sometimes there's a, a hint of a smile, I think, but like in these, I mean, you know, my sister is full on smiling. She's got her lips, you know, her teeth, I'm smiling, but I'm not bound to that. So I usually try not to make the smiles and I used all kinds of stuff in this too. Okay. That was number 14. Let me close the books that I'm done with. I'm done with these. I want to kind of keep up the order. Now we're ready for number 15. What was this? This feels fun. It feels like kind of Christmas, like, ooh, what's next? Okay, this was a family photo of me, my sister, and my brother out in our backyard, and I loved it. I loved the composition, and I thought, first, let me just sketch it. At this point, I'm learning. Like, just take your time to just play. So I used this Luminance Slate Gray 495 to sketch with. I feel like you can get some nice value with it, but it still has some color to it. And I loved it. So there were a bunch of flowers on here. My mom was really into gardening back then. And I think these are begonias, I can't remember. But um, in one of the paintings, can't remember if I did more than two, but I definitely got carried away with these. But I loved the narrative and the storytelling. And for me, it's you know, that's the place that we played in all the time. I remember the neighbor that lived on the other side of this fence and we used to bug this guy like crazy and like throw it. We annoyed him all the time. We'd throw stuff over the fence into his pool. He always had a whole bunch of different girlfriends and they'd be out there like making out in the pool and we'd be throwing stuff at him. And I don't know, we just annoyed him. I got in a lot of trouble for that, but um, okay, so there was that one. Then I decided to paint. Let's see, did I do that in this big sketchbook? No, where are you? That was 15. Oh, here we go. Okay, now I gotta zoom y'all out again. Wow, sorry about that. Back in the big sketchbook. So then I decide to paint it. I do think I could have done better with this, but it was still fun to do. I really liked the way I turned out here. I made my sister way too small and but again, I was really trying to just not focus on the people. I got really carried away here with the flowers. I definitely could have edited some of those out and started to edit those out and paint over them. I thought, nah, forget it. I'm practicing not being tied to the scene, but I rendered the place at a little more. And uh, I love doing the water and like the, um, what, the hose. That was really fun. As my eyes adjusted to the photo, I could see that it was like strung all over the place. I think I need to revisit this and do this one again. Um, I do like that. Okay, let me set that off. So that's 16. Now let's go to 17. I'm gonna be coming back to that big one, so I think I'm gonna keep y'all up. Okay, here, this starts another series of paintings that I did several of. This is me and my sister. I'm gonna show you the photo. Let me show you the sketch first. Let's just look at the sketch for a second. This is pretty much how it's rendered. And I was in my, hey, it's fine to be a little tighter. So I rendered my sister, I rendered our faces quite a bit more.
but it was so fun as my eyes adjusted to the photograph because there's like this bear that's popping up and another photo I'm opening that box of the bear and I loved this Santa that was back here so here's the photo and you can see there's two Santas like decorations but I just liked this one here's that bear popping up back there and then just kind of let my eyes adjust to some of the pattern and this uh, Christmas cactus, and then there's this like fern here. Um, and then this table pops in in one of the sketches I do, but it, I put it over here because I needed something to lead your eye in. So I want you to see how you can move things around and just take the essence of something. I pulled out a couple photos from this Christmas family gathering so I could have references of other things also to pull in. So this was my tighter version, and then, let's see, okay, 18, that was 17, 18, let's see what I did on 18, ah, oh, I was like, yes, let's get loose. So then I, this is just glassine paper, this is all oil pastel, so I put glassine because it helps it not squish. I thought, let's pull something out that's big and chunky and spread out a little more so this was a very narrow kind of like the photo and i thought let's spread it out give some room i do like how my sister turned out here you know i put the bear in a different place put mr santa here and then i was also thinking it would be nice to look out and as i was doing this it was interesting because i was listening to a podcast of an artist who painted, um, they were traveling in their van and painting, and she was talking about doing these night scenes and painting at night, and you couldn't really see what you were doing, and I thought, that's what I should have done, was put like a Christmas night scene back there. Why did I do like a daytime, no snow, doesn't even look like Christmas. So that was 15. Okay. So then, let's go back to the big one. Oh yeah, here we go. So then I did this one. This is my second favorite one that I did because I feel like there's a lot of narrative. You can see what I've done with Santa now. I've moved this plant that was way up the hanging plant here, put the table, played with the packages. I decided to do a Santa out the window scene because my mom went to great extent when we were growing up for us to see Santa, believe in Santa. We always had a Santa sighting at our house every Christmas Eve, which was kind of scary, to be honest. But I thought, oh, that would be fun. I've got Rudolph there, Santa flying through the sky, a little village kind of neighborhood scene. And I feel like I've moved away from the original photo. I still look a little like myself, but I love that my sister doesn't look anything like her. And I, I feel like there's just a I like the way her face turned out. I just really loved a lot about this. Okay, this piece of furniture right here. See how I've used it? There's this piece of furniture. There, I didn't put that there and it felt like your eyes could just go off the page. So I put that here. This year I'm, I'm working a lot and thinking a lot and trying to learn a lot about composition. So I'm thinking about that a lot with these paintings and trying to take this and then how do I compose it. I have another photo, I found another photo um, of a Christmas tree, not this one, but one from growing up and it had this star that I liked. So I used that as reference for that star because I thought it would make a better composition having the whole um, Christmas tree in there. Very, very, very happy with this. Then what did I do? Yeah, we only have two left. Then, was this yesterday? What is today? Today's the 15th, two days ago. It was the end of the day. I just wanted to paint big and quick and loose. So I pulled out a photo of me as a little girl. In this photo, I'm smiling like nobody's business. Huge smile on my face. I didn't try to render that. I'm dressed up for Halloween, kind of as like a what am I dressed as? I don't know. And I've got freckles all over my face. We've got the pumpkin there. I wanted to just think of big shapes and blocks and, and quick. So I used acrylic paint here, acrylic wash, did that. And then yesterday, I had another photo from a family camping trip. 
that I've had in my mind for a while, but it felt complex and hard. I didn't have a lot of time to paint yesterday, so I thought, perfect, let me pull this complex scene out that has all these great old lawn chairs and the background is very abstracted. You can't really tell what's going on, but there's a lot of stuff and then there's this big shadow. So I wanted to really abstract it and I, I love it. I remember this um, camping trip. I'm out here with, I wish I could remember what that orange, it was basically like a little early, early computer kind of spelling something. I've got my life vest thing still there. I'm using as a pillow. Just barely in the corner of this photo is a beach ball. But, let's see. Okay, I hope I don't regret this, but I'm going to show you this one. Um, again, please don't use these as reference. But this was the scene. I'm going to try to do it where there's not a glare, but see just the little beach ball. And I didn't know that, notice this till the very, very end. So then I pulled it, made it a little bigger. I've got something weird here, like a vest. So I just kind of abstracted that. And I've got the two chairs. I even noticed this Coca-Cola bottle um, towards the very end. And I popped that in. Another, I noticed another like bottle on this chair. And then all this stuff in the background was just really fun to abstract and use as colors and shapes. Like I have no idea what all that is hanging on that tree, but I just abstracted them like round little things. And I love that I don't really look like me. You can tell it's a kid. So this I did yesterday. So we are up to date. Probably by the time I film this video, I'll have probably 10 or 15 more. But I hope this was helpful to just see how I'm working from photos and how I'm trying to abstract and get away from the scene and be loose and use these as reference and trying to approach something that feels very emotional and has memories attached, but um, trying to make my own narrative. Oh yeah, did I tell you that? Look, that one has the milk and the cookies. And again, even the, like that lampshade being orange instead of white. So I've had a lot of fun with it and I'm gonna keep going with it because I just feel like I'm growing and learning so much. And then I have my own personal references with all these photos. And again, I don't sit down and just go through 8 million photos and pick them all out. I just pick a few and then I have just a small stack that when I feel like I want to paint or sketch, I go and just pull the first one out and work on it. I don't, yeah, I'm just trying to be detached from it. And I feel like it's teaching me a lot. It's been a great way to practice composition. I'm reading several books on composition. I'm thinking a lot about composition this year. I'm sure at some point there'll be some videos on that because I am learning so much about how to move the eye, how to break things down. Um, and I'll be sharing some books on those soon that I've been using. Okay, that is it for this week. I do hope it was helpful. I hope it made sense. And I hope that you have fun with your own family photos. I will see you back here in two weeks. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.